God of love and peace, fill us with your spirit. Free us from thinking only about ourselves and disregarding our neighbors. Give us the strength to pass on your mercy and love, even beyond borders. This we ask you, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who with you in the Holy Spirit lives and gives life now and forever. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Today's first reading is from the book of Exodus, chapter 22. Thus says the Lord, You shall not molest or oppress an alien, for you were once aliens yourselves in the land of Egypt. You shall not wrong any widow or orphan. If ever you wrong them and they cry out to me, I will surely hear their cry. My wrath will flare up and I will kill you with the sword. Then your own wives will be widows and your children orphans. If you lend money to one of your poor neighbors among my people, you shall not act like an extortioner toward him by demanding interest from him. If you take your neighbor's cloak as a pledge, you shall return it to him before sunset. For this cloak of his is the only covering he has for his body. What else has he to sleep in? If he cries out to me, I will hear him, for I am compassionate. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today's psalm is number 81, I mean 18. I love you, Lord, my strength. I love you, Lord, my strength. I love you, O Lord, my strength. O Lord, my rock, my fortress, my deliverer. I love, I love you, Lord, Lord, my strength. My God, my rock of refuge, my shield, the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. Praise be to the Lord, I exclaim and I am safe from my enemies. I love you, Lord, my strength. The Lord lives and blessed be my rock. Extolled be God my Savior. You who gave great victories to your king and showed kindness to your, man, to your anointed. I, I love, love you, Lord, Lord my, my strength. strength. Our epistle today is from St. Paul's first letter to the Thessalonians. Brothers and sisters, you know what sort of people we were among you for your sake. And you became imitators of us and of the Lord, receiving the word in great affliction with joy from the Holy Spirit, so that you became a model for all the believers in Macedonia and in Achaia. For from you the word of the Lord has sounded forth not only <clears throat> in Macedonia and in Achaia, but in every place your faith in God has gone forth. So that we have no need to say anything, for they themselves openly declare about us what sort of reception we had among you and how you turned to God from idols to serve the living and true God and to await his Son from heaven whom he raised from the dead, Jesus who delivers us from the coming wrath. The word of the Lord. Exclaiming the good news, whoever loves me will keep my word, says the Lord, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him. John chapter 14, 23rd verse. The Lord be, the Lord be with 
with you. And with your spirit. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew chapter 22. Glory, Glory to you, Lord. Lord. When the Pharisees heard that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together, and one of them, a scholar of the law, tested him by asking, Teacher, which commandment in the, law, in the law is the greatest? He said to him, You shall love the Lord, your God, with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment. The second is like this, is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. The whole law and the prophets <coughs> depend on these two commandments. These are the words of the Holy Gospel. They are the words of eternal life. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. So our, our theme this week is about the relationship between belief and conduct. And uh, it's, uh, it's, it's an important relationship to bear in mind. It's, it, oftentimes there's this dispute about uh, you know, faith versus works. This is a similar, a similar uh, relationship. Uh, some people misunderstand this distinction between faith and works, or rather the relationship between them by thinking that, well, some people believe that they're going to earn their way into heaven by doing the right things, and it's just not, it's not like that at all. What it means instead is that if we actually believe in Christ, we're going to follow his commands. We're going to obey him. That's all it means. That's really what it means. We're going to live the way God intends for us to live if we really believe. Now, I think it's not even that simple. Uh, it's, you know, we can believe something intellectually, uh, and then kind of disregard it in our actions. And that's really easy to do. I mean, that's just easy to do. I do that all the time. You know, I can believe something intellectually and, uh, and, uh, and then just disregard it in my actions. And I'll actually, I'll digress for a moment, as I am wont to do. And I will think, this is something I've been thinking about recently, you know. It's, uh, if, uh, if you get irritated with something or bothered by something, disturbed by something, which I do all the time, you know, things at work, you know, and stuff like this, and, and driving the car or whatever. You, but it can, it can drive you to distraction, right? I mean, you can get really disturbed by things. And if you reflect on them for a moment, you, can, you realize, I can't do a thing about that. I can't fix any of that. I can't change any of that. I have no control over that. And we all have things like that in our lives that we have no control over that we have no control over at all. It's in God's hands. It's in God's hands. Or it's in other people's hands or whatever it is, but it's not in our hands. And yet, I can think obsessively about stuff like that and really get bothered by it. And it's utterly pointless to do that. Now, I know intellectually, I know intellectually that that's a mistake, right? Because I really can't control these things. I can't control these other people. I can't control all the things that happen at work. Blah, 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 okay? But I'll still do it anyway. But what I can do is, right, because I know those things, I can go, wait a minute, stop. Stop doing that. You're wasting your time and energy. Go back to what makes sense. Focus on what you can do something about. Focus on what you can control, which are things about me, right, and not about the external world or other people. Now, what does that have to do with anything that we're talking about here? It has a lot to do with it. That awareness does come from the deeper belief, the deeper understanding about, oh yeah, really, I can't control that stuff, I can't do that. We can believe intellectually in our faith. We can believe it intellectually, but we have to remember that it really is the thing of primary overriding importance compared to everything else. And when we do that, we can bring ourselves back to it and live on Christian principles then we can do that. But the thing is, again, we're fallen, imperfect, you know, uh, fragile human beings. I mean, we just are. So we're not going to live on those Christian spiritual principles all the time. We're not going to do it. If we were, we'd be saints, right? We'd be St. Francis or something like that. And I don't know about y'all, but I'm not there yet, okay? Right? But we can make progress, right? 
by thinking about it and really going, wait a minute, I really believe God's in charge of the world. So I don't really have to worry about that other stuff that I can't control. And I don't have to get angry about it or whatever or get anxious or what. I don't have to do any of that because I know God's in charge. I can remember that and reorient myself back to where I know right, my faith tells me to be. I can do that. Now, this has an effect on how we live and what we do. If we really believe, and we're, look, we're going to be imperfect, we're going to mess up, we're just going to do that. We're going to do that. But when we really believe, we do come back to that. We do come back to trying to live the way God intends for us to live. And that is the relationship between our faith and our conduct. We're all sinners. We're all sinners. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. We, we're all going to mess up. But the difference between us now and the difference between us, you know, whenever in the past or whatever, before we really, you know, accepted the faith, is that now we can go, I really believe in this, and I'm really going to try and make an effort to live this way. We can do that. We can do that. And that's the relationship between faith and conduct. All right, so the gospel message for today, and this is, a, this is a justly famous passage that everybody's heard from Matthew chapter 22. So one of the Pharisees is trying to test Jesus. He's asking him, and they were always trying to trick him. He was a challenge to their social prestige and their authority and their power and so forth, so they didn't like him. And so they're trying to, they're trying to test him out. Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? Okay. Now the, the Pharisee presumably is thinking something like, every last one of these. And there's a huge number of very minute, particular laws that you had to follow. You have to follow them all. You can't, you can't, you can't pick out one as being the most significant, all right? This is probably what he's trying to, the way he's trying to trip Jesus up. But, um, but Jesus, uh, Jesus responds, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment. The second is like it, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. The whole law and the prophet depends on these two commandments. And so if you do these, then you'll do the others. You'll do everything else that's required if you do these things. All right? It doesn't say that that's the only law. It says if you do these things, you'll do everything else you're supposed to do. Now this goes along with what I was saying a moment ago in the sense that when we realize God's in charge, when we really believe that and we remember it, right, then we're going to do what we're supposed to do. And we're going to treat other people the way we're supposed to. And this really goes along with the, you know, the, the rest of uh, the readings for today, which are uh, about how we're going to treat other people. Right? Uh, we, you know, um, we don't like hearing that, that we're supposed to obey. You know, we're supposed to obey the commands of God. We, you know, we, because it, it sets a standard that we're supposed to try and meet. But um, we're supposed to do that. We were supposed to. And the, the very specific things, right, that, are, that uh, we have in mind today from our Old Testament reading from Exodus chapter 22 have to do with how we treat other people, right? You shall not molest or oppress an alien, okay? You shall not wrong any widow or orphan, okay? Uh, if you lend money to a poor person, uh, don't extort them, okay? If you borrow something from somebody, give it back, right? I mean, these are pretty basic principles of conduct. But what they're telling us is, if someone is vulnerable, don't take advantage of them. That's a basic ethical principle, and it's a very important one, right? And we encounter this all the time. We encounter people who are vulnerable, and um, I'll, I'll be honest with you, one thing that always really gets me uh, is, uh, is, is bullies. A bully really gets me. I get really angry at bullies. Uh, it's, it's unacceptable. It's totally unacceptable. And that's what, that's what this passage is telling. Don't be a bully. Don't pick on people who are vulnerable. Don't. It's wrong. If somebody's vulnerable, right, because they're in a weakened position, because they're traveling through, or they're a widow, or they're an orphan, uh, or they're, you know, they're poor, uh, or they've given you their cloak that they need themselves later, any of that stuff, they're in a vulnerable position. Don't take advantage of them. Don't be a bully. That's a pretty simple lesson. Okay, it's a pretty simple lesson. But do you know, do you know how easy it is to forget that? Let's, you know, and I have to remember this. Let's say I'm at the checkout counter in the store, and I'm impatient because I've been waiting in line behind people. 
And then there's some poor person standing there who's earning very a lot less money than me working at that cash register, right? I have to remember, and it's so easy to forget, I should be polite to this person. I shouldn't be rude to them, right? Because they're just there trying to make a living, and they're not making much of one either, and they're having to work hard for it. And it's so easy to forget that in the moment, right, when I'm impatient and I'm in a hurry, which I always am because I'm always late to something, right? But it's so easy to forget that. But God is telling me, remember, remember that. Don't be a bully. I mean, they can't fight back. They can't do that. You know, they can't do that because that's their job, right? So, I mean, they just have to take it. Well, that's wrong. Don't take advantage of that. Look at what God's telling you he's going to do. If you do, you know, he'll, he'll hear. He'll hear and he'll remember. Don't take advantage of that person. Don't do it. Don't do it. And it's hard. It's hard. It's not hard because we're mean and we want to go be mean to people. It's hard because it's hard to always remember we're supposed to be acting on spiritual principles. That's hard to do because we get so caught up in just all the stuff of the day. It's hard to do that. But what we're being told in today's readings is if we love God and if we believe, we won't do these things. We won't do these things. And we have to remember that God's expectations for us and his commands to us are real. It's not a story. It's not fiction. It's the ultimate nonfiction. It's what's most real because this is what God is telling us. If we love God and our neighbor, which Jesus is telling us to do, we will follow God's commands and endeavor as best we can to live up to his expectations. And that's something that is just, you know, as we go through the week, you know, we got to remember. I got to remind myself of it a few times every day because it is hard to do. It is hard to do. But we can do it. Remember, we have God's grace. We have God's love. We have God's support. And as I often say, we are never alone. Amen. Amen. The Confession of Faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy heaven and a fellow church. We acknowledge my baptism for the forgiveness of sins, we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. For peace from above and for our salvation, let us call upon the Lord. Hear us, O Lord and God. For peace on earth, for the integrity of the churches of God, and for the unity of all Christians, let us call upon the Lord. Hear us, O Lord and God. For this house sanctified to him, and for all who enter here with devotion, faith, and fear of God, let us call upon the Lord. Hear us, O Lord and God. For our Bishop Maurice, for all the bishops and priests and deacons of the church, and for the faithful and all people of good will, let us call upon the Lord. Hear us, O Lord and God. For our people and their governments, let us call upon the Lord. Hear us, O Lord and God. For this house and 
for this city and state, and for its people, let us call upon the Lord. Hear us, O Lord and God. For the health of the earth, the water and the air, and above all peaceful times, let us call upon the Lord. Hear us, O Lord and God. For those who are traveling, for the sick and the needy, for the mourners and the afflicted, for the imprisoned, let us call upon the Lord. Hear us, O Lord and God. Let us be free from all misery and anger, affliction and distress. Let us call upon the Lord. Hear us, O Lord and God. We also pray for our country. God, watch over those who govern and protect us, that we lead a peaceful life in piety and honor. Let us call upon the Lord. Hear us, O Lord and God. In communion and reverential remembrance of the Blessed Virgin Mary, and of all the saints, let us give ourselves and our whole life to Christ, our Savior. You, O Lord. Lord our God, your power knows no bounds, your glory exceeds our understanding, your mercy knows no measure, your love for humanity is immeasurable. Look upon us and this holy house and show us and all who pray with us your mercy and your compassion. For you deserve all glory and honor, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, now and always and forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Let us prepare ourselves for the Lord's Supper. In peace with God and the people. The peace of the Lord be with you always. In peace, peace with us all. all. O God, Heavenly Father, giver of all good gifts, who gave the bread for us to eat and the wine to drink, that he might bring joy to the heart of man, by the example and direction of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, we lay down these precious gifts of your goodness on the altar and hold them ready for the holy sacrificial meal. In them we sacrifice ourselves to you and your whole world with its weal and woe. Take hold of our humble hearts and look mercifully upon all your creation, sighing and struggling after you. So come, you who enliven and sanctify everything, almighty, eternal God, and bless this sacrifice prepared for your holy name. <coughs> Pray, brothers and sisters, that our offerings have pleased the Lord our God. The Lord accept the sacrifice of the praise and glory of his name. For all of us, we Lord, our God Almighty, you alone are holy. You accept the sacrifice of praise from those who call to you wholeheartedly. Accept our prayer and let it reach your heavenly altar. Let your good spirit of grace descend upon us these gifts and your holy people. Through the passion of your only begotten Son, with whom you are praised, together with your all holy, good, and living spirit, now and always, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Father, we offer you bread and wine and ask you, gather us at your table and strengthen us with your power through Christ our Lord. 
Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. spirit. Lift up your heart. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is worthy and right. We thank you, faithful God and Father, for your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. He had compassion for the poor and sick, the outcasts and sinners. He was a brother to those in need and despair. His life and message show us that you care for us humans like a good father and a loving mother. Therefore, we bless your loving kindness and faithfulness, joining all the angels and saints in singing the praise of your glory. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, in the name of the Lord. Father, accept and bless these offerings. In the deepest humility, we implore you and ask you, bless us and all who unite for the meal of love to proclaim the death of the Lord until he returns. And behold, in spirit, the whole church around the earth celebrates with us. Hear their pleas and give them harmony and peace and your spirit. Lord, remember also your servant. Let's remember especially Verna today, who's recovering from a procedure. Let's remember Joe, who's not feeling well. Please add the names of anyone else you'd like for us to remember in prayer this morning. My parents and my daughter. I'd like to say a prayer for all the children and, and grandchildren of the church. And my son, Nigel, and my daughter-in-law, Raven. I pray especially for my um, grandchildren particularly for Brandon, Cody, Natalie, and Hannah. Amen. And for Tom and Robin, mourning the loss of their mother. Amen. And all of their, their big, wonderful family, too. And my sister, Anshel, with her cancer. I'd like to say a prayer for my cousin uh, Conchita Rivers and her brother Clarence Rivers out in San Antonio, <coughs> Texas. They're both going through some physical challenges right now. For my Aunt Carol, who lives in New York, we pray for her spiritual life, and she's struggling with uh, some back issues right now. Like us, they all belong to you in their faith and devotion. We pause in holy communion and honor the memory of Mary, the blessed mother of the Redeemer, and all the apostles, martyrs, and confessors of the faith, whose word, example, and prayer you've left blessed among us all and for us all through Christ our Lord. Amen. Send us, we humbly ask you, your Holy Spirit, the giver of all life and all sanctification, and let these gifts of the earth be consecrated to heavenly transfigured offerings. The bread which we break is the communion of the body of the Lord, and the cup that we bless is the communion of the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. For on the day before his suffering, he took the bread in his holy and venerable hands, raised his eyes to you, O God, his almighty Father. Thank you. Blessed broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, all of you, for this is my body which is given for you. In the same way, after the meal, he also took the cup in his holy and venerable hand, thanked you again, blessed, and gave it to his disciples, and said, 
Take and drink from this, all of you, for this is the cup of the new and eternal covenant. My blood shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you do this, do this in remembrance of me. Amen. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, we are also mindful, Lord, we, your servants, and the whole church, of the blessed passion of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, as well as his resurrection from the dead and his glorious ascension. We offer him to you as our pure, holy, and immaculate sacrifice, as the sacred bread of eternal life and the cup of everlasting salvation. In humility, we implore you, Almighty God, that we all who take part in this altar fellowship and receive your Son's holy body and his blood may be filled with heavenly benediction and grace. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us in the sign of faith and rest in peace. Lord, today we remember Farron Roger Jenkins, Mary Edith Gildersleeve, William Walker Sr., Laverne Delassam, Bishop Charles Unger, Joseph Lamatina, Olympia Lamatina, John and Julia Boykin, Dr. Wayne Roberts. Please add the names of anyone who's passed away that you would like for us to remember in prayer today. I still pray for my sister, Gail Maria Rivers, and my father, Cleveland Rivers. I'd like to also say a prayer for my uncle, Charles Gildersleeve, and his son, Sandy. And a special prayer for my childhood friend, Albert Sinclair Gums, who passed this past Wednesday at Nurse Care Bur Buckhead. Victor, Vincent, and um, Anthony. I lift up to you, Lord, my sister and brother-in-law, Beth and David, and my grandchildren, Cameron, Chase, and Rachel. To them, O oh Lord, and all those who have passed away in Christ have refreshment, light, and peace. But also to us sinners, your servants, who trust in the fullness of your mercy, graciously give a share in fellowship with the holy apostles and martyrs and with the hosts of the blessed, not as we deserve, but because you forgive graciously. Therefore, we pray to you through Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father.
Let's pray together. O oh God, merciful Father, hear us, and through the life, death, and resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, grant us forgiveness of sins. We humbly ask you that we who share in this holy meal may worthily receive the body and blood of our Lord, and that we may, with our grace and heavenly blessing, become one with him in spirit, that he dwell in us and we in him. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God throughout all ages, world without end, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Oh, Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter out of my room. You shall speak only one word, and my soul will be healed. Come, everything is ready. body of Christ. Amen. The blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. One the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. One
What we receive with our mouths, O Lord, let us keep pure in our hearts, so that your temporal gift may lead us to eternal salvation. So stay in us, banish from us every thought of evil, since we are so refreshed with your pure and holy sacrament. Thank you and praise to you in all eternity. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let us pray. God of life, we thank you that you give us fellowship in the supper of your Son. We ask you to keep us alive in the Holy Spirit and lead us toward the fullness through Christ. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came to be through Him, and without Him nothing came to be. What came to be through Him was life, and this life was the light of the human race. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. A man named John was sent from God. He came for testimony to testify to the light, so that all might believe through Him. He was not the light, but came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came to be through him. But the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, but his own people did not accept him. But to those who did accept him, he gave power to become children of God. To those who believe in his name, who were born not by natural generation, nor by human choice, nor by a man's decision, but of God. And the Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. And we saw his glory, the glory as of the Father's only Son, full of grace and truth. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let us all praise the Lord. Thanks be to God. Blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Go forth in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. God. Longing for life, we wait in darkness. Longing for truth, we turn to you. Make us your own, your holy people. Life for the world to see. Christ, be our life. Shine in our hearts, shine through the darkness. Christ, be our light. Shine in your church, gather today. Thank you. 
boastful desire for the salvation of all men, has appointed the most glorious archangel, St. Michael, Prince of thy church. Make us worthy, we beseech thee, to be delivered by his powerful protection from all our enemies, that none of them may harass us at the hour of death, but that we may be conducted by him into the august presence of thy divine majesty. This we beg through the merits of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 Have a blessed week, everyone. Thank you all. The World Series is on.